Hello, I would like to inform you that what you're about to listen to are the views and comments from the hosts and guests and only reflect their own views and not the community as a whole. I hope you enjoy the podcast and Eddie, play that banter section. Speaking of, how how are my nip, nip slip photos going? <laughs> when can I expect more of the nip slip photos, Eddie? Can I share it with Amy? Yeah, of course you can. Okay, okay right. Yeah, of course you can because my nipple is not actually in it and you seem to keep forgetting that because you keep asking my permission like it's scandalous and it's just you have drawn some dumb shit on a on a really fucking fire picture of me do you want to like ruin the the the, the surprise even more <laughs> no because you don't know what dumb shit it i think nothing could ruin the surprise of what the fuck that photo is it shouldn't exist but i love it <laughs> So basically, just before I send it, I was we were doing a shoot together, and I was genuinely worried that I will see something more than I should. And I am a gentleman, and it's not and, like and I'm he was see- very respectful. I will say, thank you. And yeah, and it got to a point like I'm going, oh, I think I see. It. No, I can't. And then you know, <laughs> we were just like just genuinely checking all the time. So, oh, okay. but I thought, is this want- like whilst you're doing the shoot or whilst? Yeah. So basically, edit- I was I was basically I wanted to do some shots where I was like. In like jeans and a blazer, but with nothing oh under my the God, blazer. I spit my tea out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's not have that effect on people. <laughs> so I just I thought I was I was thinking, can I make Charlotte worried about potentially finding a nip slip? But she was just like, okay. yeah, fine. I shared it to the boyfriend. But she, he was fine. He was like, what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> my my mum thought that picture was absolutely hysterical. <laughs> it's the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the eyes. <laughs> oh, okay. Hello, hello, and welcome to Ed Talks. Ah, fuck! <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna carry on. Anyway, this is hello, everybody. This is the Ed Talks about podcast, a weekly podcast talk about comic con cosplay and everything else. I'm your host, Eddie. Oh, that was seamless. And this week we are talking about, but all you do is just point and click, right? Um, and I'll explain what that means in a minute. Uh, joining us on the podcast is Amy of Acoustica uh, Photog, or Photography, as I like to say, and Charlotte from, uh, let me, have I got this? Charlotte Warwick Photography, right? Something like that. Something like that, yeah, yeah. Anyway, welcome I'll to you be- both! Hey! <laughs> Um, it's taken us about 40 minutes to get this far, just to start the recording, because we've had either both a, a good giggle, a bitch fest, and, <laughs> and um, as you probably heard in the banter section, um, a questionable nip slip, but uh, yeah. You do so- not edit out the wrong bit at the beginning and accidentally put in, like, the bitch fest and take out the pants. Because <laughs> we won't survive that shit. That, no. that's, gonna, that's on the podcast extra. Um, oh my God, where we get cancelled. <laughs> No one in England knows. As he was me. talking about sexy Hitler, cancel him first. <laughs> it was okay. recommended. God, <laughs> I would like to say no, but that's actually the truth. Okay, just to put some context to the story, if you go no to the context. Steam, no context. Go to Steam. Go to Steam. Don't hit enter, but just type in in the store search Hitler and just leave it at that. And I'll just leave it. <laughs> Don't ever DM me what you find. That's not my fault. Okay, Hitler, I've already sent it to him. <laughs> It's on his now. Oh, dear God. Anyway, um, uh, let's do some welfare checks. Amy, how are you? How's the last seven days for you? Last seven days has been great. I've had my first convention of the year and I'm knackered. <laughs> but we're, wow. we're striving, you know? Oh, that's good to hear, I yeah. think. Um, <laughs> Charlotte, what about you? What's the last seven days been like for you? Uh, busy. <laughs> busy. Um, I've done some photography stuff. I've done some general room tidying i've edited three days of con which are now up and available to download so please stop asking me whether oh so what's it what uh what recently like the november event why don't you (laughs) get in the bin (laughs) what i've done october october i'll be brief what i've admitted (laughs) is really really confusing for everyone else but it's the order they're in on my computer so whatever uh i've done i've done saturday of october mcm and i've done Friday of May MCM. So obviously I've had about 50 messages from people going, have you done Saturday with this one or Sunday of this one? And I have to be like, no. And I, and I can't even get mad because that's my fault just being that random. But also 
what do you want me to do? At least you've got some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and I will get the rest of them done ASAP. But also, <gasps> help. <laughs> 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 just for content i first need to say this as a disclaimer i'm i've been up all day i've been doing stuff all day i'm so tired and i like, might make no sense you just you're just telling me you were doing fuck all you just you looked at your computer and went i could edit photos but you know what i'm just gonna look at hitler games on steam that's what you well, were telling right, me right now. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now i'm pl- actually playing the hitler game <laughs> i'm joking <laughs> no no don't i uh, don't anyway um so let let me like give context about this this um podcast that i base all right truthfully it's it's for amy okay not for amy because every time i've invited amy onto the podcast she's always just been doing silly type of podcast records with me nothing si- in a sense serious and i feel a bit bad so i feel like all right I'm going to get Amy on the podcast. I'm going to think of a subject. And I thought, do you know what? Let's talk about if we've ever encountered with said people that just think, oh, you, that they, they think that photography is just a simple point and click, but they don't understand, or they don't understand the process of photography. Now I'm not going to say all people uh, think this. I think a lot of people, if not most people that we work with understand the photography process, but I like to like to go a little bit further in depth just in case people don't fully understand or fully understand our backgrounds uh, uh, even uh, or the things we do to kind of like improve uh, ourselves from event to event or from picture to picture. So, you know, so I thought I'd bring Amy along and I thought, who's got a mouthpiece about, like, to talk about photography? Uh, they were busy, so I brought Shart along. And- <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, I didn't mean I didn't mean it. <laughs> Me. I know, I know. Oh. But to be fair, Charlotte would not disagree, right? This is way more uh, awkward for you if I stay quiet. Yeah, I was going to say, like, oh, that <laughs> really scared me. I, know, I, know, I can hear Edu panicking, and oh my god, did I, I look to myself in the mirror and actually get like winks at myself, like, yeah, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> you break the fourth voice. wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, that's fair enough. Uh, to be fair, I do like talking about photographer welfare and vouching for us as people not mm. just cameras so i'm i'm actually really, genuinely really excited to discuss this because i think we do so much behind the scenes that no one sees or would even think of and not that it's everyone's fault but yeah you know. no absolutely 100 percent. it's just nice to like talk about it and, and things like that so um let's uh i don't know how to kick because uh, this is also it's just a semi unscripted podcast as well. I usually have something that I would read off to do so that I know what questions to ask. But this time around, I've just, I've had the time, I haven't had the energy to do it. So, uh, and if you can hear clicking in the background, I'm also editing photos at the same time because someone threatened uh, me just earlier to see their photos. God, Amy, I can't believe you did that. I know. <laughs> I, I actually stood in front of the camera for once and this is what you do to me. <laughs> God damn it. Did you just did you look in the mirror and just winked at yourself? Uh. I literally, I have a full length mirror next to me, and I do, and I feel like it's a habit from uni. But if I'm watching something really funny and I'm on my own, this is such like a fucking. I'm gonna be put in a home. If, <laughs> if I, I'm watching something hysterical, like you know, Fry and Laurie, and something really funny happens, I will laugh and I will look at myself in the mirror and be like, "Yeah, it is funny." <laughs> like just to kind of. Like, I think you need to get out more or something. It's nice to know that I also find it funny. Would that not, like, freak you out? Like, do you ever just catch movement and then be like, oh, fuck, oh, it's just me. (laughs) (laughs) To be fair, I do know what I look like, so I'm not like, shit! (laughs) There's a a ginger with a boob out in the mirror. Oh, dear. Anyway, I'm going to move it along. Um, Jesus Christ. (laughs) This is more oh. like unhinged podcast. I no, love re- it. So unhinged already. Um, I'll start with Amy because uh, alphabetically. Um, generally, have you? Do you think? Is do you think there is perception from the outside world, you know, the people you work with, that do you get a sense that there are some people who don't fully understand what the process is from taking the picture up until you hand it to them? Um. Yeah. No. Certainly. There's. There's definitely been times where. 
I think people don't realize the amount of kit that photographers carry around. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, lights. But it's fine. I'm like, well, no, we're, I don't know, for example, like in a car park or whatever. I've never been to MCM, but like using that as an example. <laughs> it's yeah. like, well, there's not much light here. So um, I think a lot of people don't realize that we carry a lot of kit and that kit equates to the pictures that we take so like i often have to explain to people like oh this is my legs for lens day Uh, yeah legs legs for days lens oh my god my brain um and like trying to explain them it's wide angle so basically i like making it cool that sort of thing you know i had to work that out because i think i'm I'm thinking the lydia picture yes yeah everyone's like god she's so tall and her leg is so long like it's an ultra wide lens (laughs) yeah she's she's only like three foot tall so (laughs) That's legit. <laughs> Lydia, we love you. <laughs> but um but yeah, and then I think not so much with me because of I think it's all like very bloody obvious that I play around with Photoshop quite a lot. So I think I've been very lucky in the leeway of taking my time with images. I've never really been chased without like reasonable reason. Um but I do know and I've had it where people have literally like the the most common thing that every photographer bitches about is like no we don't have your images and i'm still at the convention <laughs> you know <laughs> so i think it <laughs> what amy's not saying is she's at a different convention yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been four months and still nothing <laughs> four months is pretty good going actually <laughs> <laughs> no, the sad thing is that does happen so uh... <laughs> Or like you bump into them at a convention, they're like, "So where's my images?" You're like, "Do you want some new ones? Shall we take some new photos?" (laughs) That's the worst way to change the subject. Hey, let me add more to my workload. Yeah, let's do this. Crippling depression afterwards. Oh Oh my god. God. (laughs) Are we all okay? Probably yeah, not. Right. No, no. Oh. <laughs> Charlotte, what about yourself? Uh, have you encountered people that think, "Oh, yeah, this is you know, dead." Si- you know, it, it, it's a dead simple process. Yeah, I think the biggest bits that people miss are like the admin side of it, which I I know I always gone about it when I'm on your podcast. I'm sorry. The That's sheer fine. amount of like just. Every individual you have to message multiple times, get contact yeah. details, get stuff signed, get it approved, blah, 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 like age. You've got to go th- I now started live streaming, going through the pictures and like literally just whittling them down to the ones I'm going to edit because people do not understand that it takes hours to do that. Not I think the that's the sometimes. best thing I ever started doing was streaming editing. Yeah. Because so then, can see. yeah. And then I've also had like, clients or cosplayers or whatever drop into stream and then be like oh okay so that's how you do it. or oh i don't like that image or it, it gives you like a nice like live active feedback where you're like yeah. oh okay you don't like this right i know what to work on um and i think that's like one of the best moves i've ever done is streaming editing 100 oh, percent. and i think the other thing that people like which ties into that as well that people forget is that um if your photographer is taking effortless images like beautifully lit images or is using like gear the amount of money and if not money just time that's gone into learning to take pictures that well that you can do the quality that quickly blah blah blah, is insane and then the amount of time behind the scenes that people spend just to learn to like color correct or skin smooth I know there are apps now but like most of us I think do it just like organically like proper proper quote-unquote retouching And it's just the sheer amount of like education time that goes in in people's spare times because most photographers don't like also sorry have uh, like full time jobs. I don't think people realize it. So when they're saying like, oh, like, where are my pictures? I'm like, I understand that you want them. But actually, a lot of the spare time I'm doing, I'm educating myself to get better pictures in future. So sometimes editing like the free pictures is last on my to do list. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I think the admin and all, and then like the education and like money side, people don't see as much. Mm. No, I, I, I totally get that. I, I, yeah, I, thing is, I, I, the way I was going to answer it, it's like I actually don't think it's the cosplayers themselves 
that don't don't know. I think it's their, f- uh, you know, their followers that don't seem to understand that. I was, um, you wouldn't have heard this, but on a previous podcast that I recorded, I was bitching and moaning how people don't comment, how people who comment on the cosplayers' feed on their photos don't. I wish th- I, you know, the photographers was part of that narrative of saying, "Oh, I love that, I love that cosplay, and the photo looks great." C- credit to the ph- photographer. Th- there's, n- there's never that type of narrative when I ever see the photos go because I do believe, and I think it's because we, d- we as photographers do e- educate the cosplayers to say, "Look, it does take time." They see all of this, uh, like, like you say, both of you do um, online streams of how you edit photos and things like that. Uh, I'm really scared actually to do that myself because I feel like if I do that, people looking at, oh, is that all you do? That doesn't seem hard. And do you get what I'm saying? But I think, but I want to go later in about um, uh, what's the word um, experience, you know? Because I think some of that is just it's not about you can just move sliders about and go, oh, that'll do. But it's the experience. I think I don't think people really appreciate the the craft that we put into these photos and, and like i said we'll we'll go into experience and like uh learnings and things like that but i mean do you, do you also get that feeling as well that's not you know cosplayers are probably the not as bad but it's the people it's their followers who just go meh it's like oh it's like it's you know they don't appreciate that process especially if they say follow the stories and stuff like that and then they're like so where are the images then you did this really cool photo shoot in this awesome location with this photographer. Where's the photos? <laughs> so it's almost like it's not the cosplayers themselves that are like driving that force of where's my images. It, it is, as you said, it's the followers because the, it, this world is very like consumer fast and it's now that we want it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I think is part of the problem is that you as a person can't do the same thing as a team of people. Yeah. And I think people need to realize that a photographer that you see at a convention does everything. They take the photos, they edit it, they crop it, whatever, and then send it on to them. It, it would be lovely if you had a team, but you don't. And oh most my. have <laughs> most have a day job. So it's that understanding of you just need to be patient. Like, I think it's different as well, um, depending if it's like paid stuff. Like, I know I prioritize paid stuff over non-paid stuff. Um, and I think they have a more understanding because it's like, oh, we've paid money towards this. So it's kind of like, it gives them a better time frame of like knowledge of, okay, I paid for this. I'm going to get X, Y, and Z out of it. I'm probably Prince, probably Patreon, but then they're also like working people. So they understand, okay, after they finish their process, I have to then do my marketing. So it's, it's really different on like who the consumer is in my opinion like if it's just a normal con floor photo they want it there and then but if it's going to be like oh we're gonna walk off the the beaten path and we're gonna go take pictures here because it suits this character and you know i think those ones have more of an understanding <clears throat> as to the work that goes into it compared to just someone that's like oh just you know take a quick snappy photo of me against this gray wall <laughs> you oh, know god don't talk about gray walls oh my god you just triggered me <laughs> oh. I've never been, but I know it. <laughs> I love that. I love that you've never been and you're like, yeah, grey walls. The grey wall. I hate it. I hate it and I've never been. Oh, you have no idea how much I hate and those the trees. Walls. There's also the trees. <laughs> so I don't mind the trees. Trees could look different, especially from season to season. Just, mm. Unless the walls cover, gets covered in moss, they look the same every fucking time. <laughs> I, <sighs> I feel like from what you said it's it's a really difficult one to explain to someone because as because i also cosplay right so when i take pictures with someone i am dying to see them like yes, i'm yeah. like oh my god i can't wait to see how they turned out they looked amazing in the back of the camera yeah blah, blah, blah. and that excitement level makes you want to be like oh my god can i have them now can i have them now because you're excited mm-hmm. which is yeah so lovely and as a photographer and i'm sure we'd all agree that is the best feeling in the world when someone wants something you've done because they love it yeah but um, some of the photos I've taken that require more editing, I've literally been like, I'm going to put them to the back so I can actually spend the good three, four hours that I'm going to need to spend on them mm-hmm. so I can get like a larger volume out first. But because I want to do a good job and then when people, like, and I don't want to feel like I'm, you know, being late with pictures, but it's generally because I'm like, I know I can do a really good job on this fight when I wait till I have the time to do it. 
mm-hmm. rather than just doing it quickly because I can. So yeah. like there's lots of factors that go into deciding it and it's like I know you really want them now and I want to give them to you now but I also want to give you my best work so you're yeah. like I'm you worthy of proud. that happiness. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and it also means like I feel it means people will come back to you because you've taken yeah. that time and that effort. And they come for your style, your edit. Um, and I feel like they're the ones that I, I love the most because they sort of get it. <laughs> yeah. They're kind of like, okay, I know it could possibly take up to, I don't know, three months or whatever. Um, but at least the images that I'm going to get are high quality. And, yeah. yeah. And it's exactly what, let's say, if you got paid or whatever, is what they seek you out for. Yeah. You know, they don't seek you out for your raws or whatever. They seek you out for your final image. Um, so it's almost like they're more understanding. <laughs> Oh my god! I think I've had a few people uh, when I first started doing photography. I've actually had people come up to me and said, "Oh, can I have the copy of the rules, please?" Uh, and I went, "Um." I did, I did ask a friend like uh, when I was first. So I say, like, "Is this right? Should I be doing?" They went, "No, Ed, just hold on to your rules. Don't the, ever let go of those rules." And the thing is, there's other photographers that do that. Like I know hmm. some that will give every image they took of that person, like everything. And I'm hmm. like. But that's not even your best work. And then for me, if I saw someone using an image that I'd taken and then edit it poorly, I'm like, that reflects poorly on my work. Yeah. Mm. Because that is not my vision and you've gone and like butchered it. And reputation (laughs) is so huge for like... Yeah. I think think this is something that cosplayers have done so much better at in like the five years I've been doing this, but still lacking is like the... The understanding when you when someone like a lay person, not or just a lay cosplayer, looks at an image, they see the costume and the model, and they're like, "Oh my god, the costume and the model look incredible!" And if a photographer's done a smashingly good job, you don't even notice the edit, you don't notice the color grade, you don't notice the retouch. You just mm. and that's the kind of dilemma is like a a perfect or a great photo, you don't notice anything that's been done to it. So your focus is solely on the subject, which means as photographers, we get very little like, oh my God, well done, good photo. Or like the the color grading is amazing because why would you if you've done a good job? But so we kind of rely on cosplayers to like correctly tag us and almost like not, it's not a requirement of course, but cosplayers that go out of their way to say like, I shot with blah, blah, blah. And they did this. Like someone I shot the other day put up a story where she put up the picture and she I didn't realize one of her friends had taken a picture behind the scenes of me shooting her and she put them up next to each other and she was like oh my god it was so lovely to shoot with Charlotte and I really appreciated that because it actually showed people that like this is a photo that was taken by a person Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is that person and I appreciate it and it was such a small thing to do and it really made like I was like I want to go out of my way to like find her next con do a really lovely shoot with her because it makes me like she's she respects the photography. Mm, ab- absolutely, that, I, you know I totally get that. Whilst I remember, I was going to ask this earlier, and I totally uh, to, is I, I got sidetracked because I, I didn't want to interrupt what you two were talking about. But mm-hmm. Charlotte, as someone who is both cosplayed and is a photographer, is it easier to know not to like be so? How I'm going to put it. Very like snatchy, snatchy about saying, "Oh, can I see those photos? Can I?" Do you, is it easier to know you know, to like back off a little bit to go? Okay, I know the process. Maybe or is it is it even harder because you go, "I know they're good photos there, and I can see it, and I can see how it's going to be edited." If I was editing those photos, I could do it the way I want. Is it is it easy for you? I think it is easier because I. I because I'm so impulsive, and when I love something, I just want it right then and there. But I know that even when they're phrased so lovely, nicely, and I don't hold it against anyone, there's still that like pang of guilt you get when you get a message asking about it. And I don't want to give that to anyone else because it does, when you've got a lot of people doing it, even well-meaning, even polite, it, especially if it just all happens to happen in one week, it genuinely makes you feel really bad, like you mm. failed at something. And I don't want to do that to someone else. So, but I know I'm going to be excited about it, which is basically why I now do self-portraits. Because I was like, if I want pictures of my cosplay regularly, and I, you know, I can't wait for other photographers and like hound them for it. That's not fair because they're on their own schedules. I'll get them when I get them, if I get them. So I was like, I'll basically fill in the gap. And this this is irrelevant. I'm a photographer. You could do this on your phone at home. I worked out a set that would work for me. And I was like, okay, every time I get a new cosplay, I'll do a shoot myself take my time and then when I shoot with people like I'll shoot Doctor Strange and Megacon 
but I've done my own shoot now. So if I want to post content in the meantime, I've got that filler and it kind of fills the gap between like, I don't want to rush people for it. And if it gets to like a year or something, I might ask just in case there's like, oh, none of them were good or whatever. Yeah. A year, hang on, a year. You would wait a year I'll before wait you a go. Year. I will wait a year because, and I say this because I did a con. I The reason I'm behind on cons is that I shot a con and then for the first time in like my kind of professional, I got back to back weekend shoots of like paid shoots. Mm. So I did like three weekends where I was shooting paid, which does not happen to me along with like a full week of work. So, and then the like three weeks after that, I'm editing all the pictures from these shoots and I got some messages from like some friends being like, Oh, well like what, where are my pictures? And I was like, well, you know, I've been editing. They're like, well, I can't see it. And I was like, no, cause these are private shoots. These are, private shoots for yeah. people some of them were like boudoir I'm like these are not shoots I can even really share to my portfolio mm. just yeah. because you can't see it doesn't mean I haven't been working so like I will happily give someone a year because after a year I feel like it's cool to be and you can ask before but for me it has sometimes taken me a year to get pictures back so I think if I'm a photographer and it took me a year then yes I would reasonably say if it took someone else a year I wouldn't bat an eyelid and I'm not saying that's normal <laughs> Yeah. But, like, you know, sometimes shit happens. And it's just being, your photos are, like, a, a, a gift. They're not, like, a right. Yeah. But at the same time, I kind of feel that's a bit of shame um, on the photographers for not sharing that information with people. Yeah. Like, I kind of feel you shouldn't have to wait a year before you're, like, can I have that? <laughs> they yeah. should be, like, look, I know I'm three months after the shoot, just to let you know uh, I'm currently working on x y and z and that um you are here and i've i don't know color graded them or whatever just to give a little bit of like at ease for people yeah that's true i agree so you're, I you're more, a nicer more, human than the me the more transparent <laughs> you can be the, yeah. the better it always is so like when people yeah. ask i'll always say like look i'm aiming to get them done like for example at the moment i'm like i'm getting, aiming to get everything done by the end of march oh so, so. <laughs> like when people ask i can say that because i'm like that's my time frame which is good to have an answer for people because sometimes I have messaged people and they've been like oh yeah no I'll, I'll I'll you know I'll let you know and then you just don't hear anything for another six months and I'm like mm-hmm. that's fine you know but mm. I do you wish think that gives you a said, bitter like taste about it all do you ever think like okay I'm not going to work with that photographer again there's one photographer I've got that with just because not like one specific there's a couple but it's more just because I've shot with them a few times and I don't think I've really ever had photos back or like maybe one that they posted. That, that, hang on, that photographer isn't called Eddie from Food and Cosplay, right? Not Eddie from Food and Cosplay. His stuff is shit. I wouldn't post it work with him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got the Eddie. Eddie's really good and he knows it. But, um, Fucking yeah. hell. Yeah, there's a couple of people where I've just shot with them like kind of fast at con. Mm. And because I shoot at cons, sorry, I know I'm talking loads. Um, because That's right. I shoot at cons, I know I don't have that much time to shoot with other people so the Mm. shoots I do do are kind of like time valuable and there's a few photographers that I shoot with and that kind of never get my pictures back to me where I'm like when I've got like maybe two times I can shoot with people a day I really have nothing if they don't give me anything so I'd rather just spend that 10 minutes with like Eddie who will always give me pictures back like a good selection and I know I've then got that selection to post rather than someone where I'm like they take beautiful pictures but I only ever seem to get one and that's not like time to photo worth oh. it just because I'm so busy. Mm-hmm. That's cool. No, I totally get that. I totally get that. Anyway, no, this is just a supplement question that you were talking earlier and I thought, I wonder if it's easier that because you know the process that you, you know, it's easy for you to back off and go, right, there we are. And that can, it's quite interesting. You, I, yeah, I would said, I would say after three months, if you've not seen anything to start, yeah. start. So you're, that's probably my fault. That, that's why people are asking you. Would you what, say, sorry, just quick. Would you say like, if you were editing, if you could see they were uploading from that con, mm. would you still ask? Or would you be like, oh, clearly they're working through it? No, I, 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 I personally, sorry, I'll, let, sorry to put in. I would, I would actually, if I start seeing it, I'd start asking then. Because okay. it, it feels like, because oh. it, it, I think it's because, oh, does that mean, because the way I work is I work in as a batch and then release rather than mm-hmm. small, you know, small, not, when I say batch, I, I like pick all my photos, edit them all and then batch send it out. Yeah. Rather yeah. than batch send, batch send, batch send. And it, 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 I can't work like that because I, because I think in my mind, 
if I did it that way, more people come up to me and go, oh. Oh, you- so you do like a whole convention and then yeah. send them all out. Yeah. So oh. that everyone everyone gets it equally and then no one can go, you prioritize that person over that person. Like, no, uh, okay. no, I haven't. <laughs> Is that an experience that you've had before then? No, it's, I don't know, actually. I think it's because I think I, I like to work on, on the basis of fairness. That's it, really. I think, yeah, because yeah, I'll tend to do a day at a time. But then, like we were talking about before, if there's one or two pictures that I'm like, this will look banging in my portfolio now, I will just put that up, like, the day after. If I oh, yeah. need it. I think if you're portfolio. excited about it, then... Mm. Like, if you're excited about anything, you tend to, like, want to work on that first. Yeah. yeah. Regardless of the situation, if you're a cosplayer, you work on some new prop or whatever, and you're like, I really want to paint that. I think that same feeling is, like... The same for photographers like that shoot went amazing the lighting that day was fantastic i'm so excited to work on these and i think sometimes that can be a problem because like obviously there's other people that have been waiting for stuff yeah. <laughs> but at the same time you're like but it's bagging <laughs> i think that's what, but that's what people forget like and i'm sure eddie will agree and you will agree what that, what that when <laughs> that in order to stay creatively interested in something you have to sometimes just fuel the creative fire so if i love like a jedi picture of someone for example and i know i've got like six or seven hours of admin sorting and like stuff it's kind of it like that's not creatively inspiring but in order to get to that i'm like i need to i've got such creative bursts of energy and idea for this edit i've got to get that edit out the way before i go to like the not well yeah like the more the less interesting ones i don't i have less of an idea for because otherwise i'll literally rush through them to get to the other ones so i'll do like a worse job yeah, I've got to keep yeah. the spark. No, absolutely. I could just be no, mad. No, I, I, I totally get that. I, I, I get where you're coming from. Um, yeah. No, sorry, I, I was interrupting Amy. What about you? Would you do you do it, which way do you do it? Do you batch send, batch um, send, or do you do the whole convention and then send? Now, this is the funny thing because I think I r- run my my schedule completely differently to both of you. I'm I'm guessing. Um, is that I release in batches of the person <laughs> um oh. I, so like say i don't know if i if i shot with one cosplayer and i and then later that day i shot with someone else but i won't do a whole convention i'll do that person's one complete their one and send it straight away um and i think it's purely because i completely and utterly like schedule my day so mm. i will say right i'm only shooting with eight people One hour per person gives me time to fanny around, walk around. But then I know I only have eight people, but I've put all my quality into, uh, well, hopefully, (laughs) into like the lighting, the setting, the area, you know. Um, And then I think a lot of people don't mind it so much because they know, right, you've already dedicated an hour of your time for them before Mm -hmm. you even like dedicate your time editing their picture. So I, yeah, I edit per person but i don't have like it's not like an mcm where i go there and i just stand in one location and shoot just anyone that comes up to me um i've not done that for a very long time and i think it keeps me in like a healthy headspace because sometimes i'll get to images and i'll be like i can't face these because i've not given the time to give the credit for the outfit (laughs) like in the sense of like i've done it i feel that i've done a bad job and then i hate like I don't want to hate the images, so I don't want to work on them because I know the more I work on something that in my head, I'm already like, I hate these. Yeah. I just mm. feel that the the image themselves will just come out absolutely terrible. And they probably don't think that, but it's just like a mental game, um, at least for me. So that's why I, I very regiment my like, I have so many hours and so many people and that's it. And then outside of that, if I see someone walking by in a costume that I absolutely love and have to take photos of, it gives me the time to sort of do that as well. Um, and it just keeps the stress down. So, and then, whoa, whoa, and then wait, I, wait, 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 you can keep the stress down. How? <laughs> <laughs> because, because it's like it, it having uh, a schedule I'm, keeps it down for me. No, no, I, I joke. I joke. Yeah. To be fair, no, but I have a schedule at MCM London. And I, I, I feel like I'm not stressed. I'm just rushing everywhere, but not rushing like a headless chicken. Like everyone thinks I am. I just organized pacing, shall we say? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I I, I, I want to keep the conversation moving. I I, I kind of want to ask how much. Okay, do I want to do this question? Okay, let's do the, let's do the bad question. Uh, let's okay. How much gear 
<laughs> in money do you think of the moment that you purchased it that's the we'll take that cost how much do you think you carry to a comic con oh. <laughs> i'm just adding it up now <laughs> I just, oh, okay. let me go first preface this by saying like you don't need expensive gear. The reason no. we've got it is we've been shooting a long time. Oh, and absolutely. it's an investment in our like actual hobbies yeah. and jobs. So, so you just please don't listen to some oh my god, you bitches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I'll, 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 I'll yeah. go first very quickly then. Uh, mm-hmm. uh camera, I think it was a grand and a half, two lenses, I think that's ran about uh, almost a grand and a half as well there. A laptop to edit photos, and then a monthly description that that laptop cost me a one thousand seven hundred. Um, I've got memory cards, loads of those, batteries, uh, two light sticks. Uh, that I think they were like fifty quid each. Those light sticks. Um, I've got stands, but some of them been donated to me, so I will say that was a zero cost. So yeah, um, oh, I've got a tripod that was about. Th- Two, three hundred quid for when I Kickstarter it. I've got loads of peak design stuff. Again, I'm not sponsored by Peak. Do you know what? I need to get you should in contact. Be. You really should be. I'm gonna have to contact Peak Design and say, Can I be sponsored by you one of these days? I do a podcast. <laughs> I, I regularly talk about you. And yeah, so I think I I must carry about at least five, if not six gra- No. Oh, six to seven yeah, six yeah, to seven grand I've worth. Just, yeah. I've just Googled my preliminary, Googled, I've just added up at a very rough guesstimate. Mm-hmm. This is camera, lenses, uh, computer, not even including subscriptions to all the programs I use, um, and then like basic lights and like SD cards and stuff. I'm at five seven, mm. and oh, then yeah. I just thought about it and I was like, if I brought my strobe lights, I would be at like seven eight nine. And this is over years. I might yeah. add, like yeah, over yeah. years, I've collected all this, but but it's it's a lot. It's, I don't think people realise how it's, it's because of the glass and the camera lenses, but they cost so much. <laughs> oh, absolutely. But uh, the next, uh, uh, well, actually, I'll let Amy uh, say her little total. Oh, Which, yeah. I, I was just, <laughs> I was counting it up pretty much the same as you guys. We're hitting at least, like, on person, if we're not talking about, like, computers and stuff, easily mm. 6K. Yeah. Like, but, carrying. <laughs> yeah. But I want to add, we only have all of this is because we we've gained experience from the, from photography, from either th- the, sh- the time we shoot and said, okay, I know not necessarily getting a better equipment will make me a better photographer, but I'm, I'm moving up the scale to go. It certainly I- helps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, it's, it's the same. It's like when you start off, you end up getting your first body camera. And the first thing that everyone always suggests is you get yourself a little nifty 50, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, and I think that can last you for years. It's only until you suddenly start thinking, right, I want to start making images that look like this. And then you're like, what do I need? Okay, I need maybe one more lens that will accompany that. And then you have to decide, do I want to be a prime lens user or do I want to have telefocal lenses or what? Um, like me, I love prime lenses. Oh, I <laughs> and love them. they're so much nicer. Yeah, exactly. But it's a right pain because you end up carrying like three three prime lenses because each one has its own usage <laughs> and i have like an example of that on one of my um photo shoots i did was um a major from ghost in the shell and she's with a bike in a tunnel yeah um and it's the same positioning and everything but i used three different lenses in that and you can see the difference that the lenses oh provide. yeah like oh if i use a prime everything looks really like deep and the tunnel looks long and then i've got Mm. my like um wide angle lens which is a 10 mil absolutely love it but it compresses everything and it just makes the tunnel look so like small and it's Mm. just funny like the differences and it's like oh absolutely and that's what you're saying you're you're learning you're teaching yourself that okay i like this style yeah. So I need to invest in these sort of lenses. And it's not something that people can drop money on straight away. It's something you go, right, oh, I need to wait a year of saving to get that yeah. lens or whatever. Mm. Um, and I think people kind of don't appreciate like the amount of stuff you carry. And I always like have people, sometimes I'm like, oh, can you 
bring my bag over because I'm a person that like ditches all my shit on the floor, right? Yeah, yeah same. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm surprised the amount of times I ditch my stuff at a comic con. It's not been nicked. If yeah. now saying that I've got six grand's worth oh, God. Yeah, don't on my back, I swear someone's gonna go, Oh, I have this nicked. Don't you dare. Yeah. I've got an air tag in that bag somewhere, it'll be found. Okay. I, I would ju- I'd like to appreciate the amount of times I've dumped my shit in the background of my own picture and then got pissed off, had to edit out. Like, <laughs> That's happened multiple times that I've got to learn. I'm like, who's left their fucking rucksack? Oh, it's my camera bag. <laughs> but yeah, and like you said, it, it's the experience that... Sorry, I was just say It's the experience that of like knowing what you want from a photo and how to get... And like, and also, like the amount of times I've like spoken to other people who have gone, who said, oh, you should try this. I don't Oh, no, no, it's all right. So they make me use it and I'm gone, fuck i need to get yeah. this now shit yeah. yeah so hang on this goes out to andy or i know who definitely doesn't listen to the podcast it's your fault i own a tele- uh, telescopic lens telescopic telephoto telephoto lens yeah. and yeah oh just oh just oh. i really want one <laughs> have you I'll considered get- stealing <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now that we've learned that the majority of photographers just ditch their shit everywhere, you can just <laughs> help yourself to some. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. I should start doing that. So, <laughs> so <laughs> rifling for oh, is that Charlotte's over there? Oh, so go- oh, she's Nikon. No, I'm okay. So, <laughs> what are you, Canon? <laughs> I'm Canon. Yes. Oh. It's what. It's weird that we get on. I know it is. <laughs> can we just gang up on him then? Yeah. What? We are the true photographers. <laughs> whoa, 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 no, 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 back up, back up. You're on my podcast. You're in my house. <laughs> this is my house. This is my, yeah, my it's, rules. It's true though. It's like expensive gear does not yeah. make a better or worse no. photo mm-hmm. necessarily. Obviously, yeah, like yeah. the nicer the camera and lens, if you understand it, the more you can control your environment and your lighting to get the photo you want. So if you're a photographer with vision or a style, good or expensive equipment that suits you is literally the most helpful. And you wouldn't necessarily be able to get the same effect on like a super cheap stars kit because it's not doing what you've learned to do through honing your skills. Mm -hmm. But it's why when it's kind of hilarious when like you were saying at the beginning people say like oh nice camera do you just press a button like the camera's beautiful because you're like yeah the camera lens looks good because I learned to use it this way it's all on manual like blah, blah, blah. and they're like oh my god your camera's lovely I'm like yeah, yeah. It, and I think it's this, so cliche but it still makes you have that yeah. gut reaction but then there's also like I, I wish I could like show quotation marks but like there's other photographers <laughs> in quotation marks that are like oh I have that lens too and then they start sh- this is like so bitchy but they like show you their pictures and you're like wow you don't understand how to use this lens <laughs> <laughs> I'm never showing you my photos ever <laughs> <laughs> no. I was exa- I was thinking the exact same <laughs> But, but I there know is, what you mean there. Yeah, you're kind of like, oh, great. We're comparing. Then you look at the pictures. You're like, oh, I think you need to to go learn this a little bit more. <laughs> but this is on the flip side. Like, I I really enjoy teaching people. Yeah. So, like, say if I'm I'm shooting at a con and I'm taking pictures, and some other photographer or someone that's wanting to learn comes up and they're like asking me about what I'm doing, and I get this a lot. I don't know if you guys do. Um, and I'll be like, oh yeah, this is the lens I'm using, so on and so forth. What have you got? And then we'll start talking, and then I'll say, right, do you want do you want to have a go? If the cosplayer doesn't mind, do you want to have a go and try taking the image? And I'll I'll do things like hand over my like um like my flash trigger and stuff and be like oh give a try with these lights if you never worked with lights here have a go at this see what you think and then recommend like settings and i love doing that and i've done it at so many conventions um where i just want people to learn as well like i was Hmm. that person at one point and i would love to teach that to someone else and i'm not keen on like a workshop type situation Mm -hmm. like i I don't like panels where you go and they talk about it Mm -hmm. um i'm more of a come here I'll show you how to do it and then people can learn from that I'm much much of a hand-on person when it comes to learning and yeah. I think there should be more people that do that as well like as much as I was like oh that that image is crap I like to also be like well let's try and fix that yeah. <laughs> as long as they're not like snobby people you know like if they're like oh this is such a great photo I don't want to be like that bitch that's like it's not really <laughs> <laughs> you, you I feel like you, you read the room but then you know yeah yeah but I love that, and I want more people to do that. To, I, I to love teach. the education part. I think that's kind of the fun bit of photography is you're like, look. The, and I I mean, I found MCM when I started. Not anymore, actually. It's got really much better. But when I started, it was so closed off. Like, 
every photographer seemed to have their own style and no one wanted to talk about it mm-hmm. because everyone kind of had their niche and mm-hmm. moving into it it was kind of scary so mm-hmm. and I think now everyone's got a lot more used to saying like oh how did you do that and people just yeah. tell them and it's so much more healthy because even if you tell someone exactly how you do something it doesn't mean they'll be able to execute it the same so, way as you or the yeah. best because it's an art form and it relies on you to be you know good so yeah. the teaching part is really fun because the look in someone's face when they get it and then know that they can apply it to their own style is really nice to see yeah no mm-hmm. I, I, I totally get that and i talk about experience and things like that, that that goes hand in hand with the equipment there's also something else that i think i think charlotte i want to bring up charlotte on this one um and I don't know if Amy has done the same, but basically, I also want. That's it. That's the question I want to ask. Is that basically, I'm always worried because I think just listening to you to talk about things, like I'm worried, I'm self-taught, and I feel like I'm always on the back foot because I'm self-taught. But I don't but, think that makes you any better or any worse than someone else that does photography. That's yeah. That's what's about to get yeah. at because I think because. I'm a photographer, always believes that every day is a school day. I'm willing to learn and listen to other people's advice. I think I've, that's why I'm probably, or, you know, I feel like I am on par with a, you know, a decent photographer. You know, I know what I like and I know, I know what I like and I like what I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and things like that. But um, are you, either you think, of you? Do you think that I'm not? So I'm just confused what you think I've, Oh no, I was about to ask the question. Are you two? Yeah, I I was going to ask. No, let let me up. Are you two like educated in photography or are you also self taught like I am? I am barely educated. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, yes and no. (laughs) Okay. So, So, so Amy, you go for You tell us what what you mean by that. Yeah. So, um, (laughs) so my story is basically um, at uni, I hated my course. So for me and Asian backgrounds is like, we like to learn new things all the time. So for me to get over being bored at my uni, I decided to do like a crash course in photography. (laughs) Amazing. Yeah. (laughs) So I did college and uni at the same time. Um, And I did, it was just a wee little like, what was it? Eight week course. Um, And the funny thing is the course was on film photography Mm-hmm. So I actually learned like dark room processing, oh. film and all that. So in a sense, I learned photography, but nothing to do with digital photography at all. Yeah. <laughs> so I only had an eight week crash course, which then you could lead on to doing like a HNC, a HND or anything like that. But because that wasn't my main um, study, that's all I had. So everything past that has been self-taught. Like I had to teach myself how to use lights, um, what lenses I would like, what what style I want, you know, um, in the process, it's just been, so that's why I always say like, I'm kind of 50-50, but I learned film photography and not digital. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, no, that's, that's really interesting. I didn't, um, I think film photography is a, it's a definitely an art to itself. Um, yeah. I think I know someone who's actually tried to pick that up uh, a couple of years ago, actually. I don't know if he's still mm. doing it or not, but yeah. Um, Charlotte, I think, I think, I don't know if I offended you by when I said, I assumed you were educated in photography, but were you or weren't you? Oh, no, I was just curious. Cause I suddenly went, wait, do people like, no. Um, so I, it's kind of weird. Like Amy. So I was already kind of thinking on myself kind of as a photographer like when I was like way up like 15, 14 15 because my I used to like shoot all the time with my dad when we we're on holiday so I did a lot of photography obviously not proper but then when I did I did a photography AS level at school which they had a photography studio so I learned to use studio lights there but they were it was really shit actually <laughs> like the only thing I took away from doing photography AS level was like the technical using of lights None of the like editing, none of the Photoshop, like literally everything else was so poor. So I'd say in terms of like, that probably gave me a boost because most people do not have access to a studio and I'm well aware of that. So the studio boost that I got there, just the confidence to know that I could get some lights and probably use them, advantage me, obviously. But then everything else was literally just like, this photo is pretty I'm going to YouTube how to do that. And then I'd learn that technique. So I'm, I would say I'm like 90% self-taught and then 10% I've just been lucky. 
but and then now like in the last like two or three years I've been like purposefully doing workshops of lighting techniques I like Mm. like literally putting money into teaching myself um so that I can learn more stuff in like basically more of like a pro way which you know I or really almost it's like validation though isn't it you, do you ever find that if you go and do these workshops and then they're like oh do this you're like ah oh, I do that already <laughs> it's like a little bit of a, a nice little that. like pat on the back you're like yeah I think it's it's really interesting actually because um I'll be brief I promise <laughs> um it's interesting doing workshops because like you said earlier I'm not like a sit and listen person mm. but I've done th- I've done t- I would say three different types of workshop one where the photographer did like one day she did a quick introduction to shooting and stuff and then we literally went to Hampstead Heath and shot with models on location like in groups she showed us everything so it's like in you are shooting you need to find a workshop where you are shooting yeah I did one like that and then the next whole day was editing and then I did one more oh. it was just one-on-one me and the photographer for like four hours with a model again we did two hours editing two hours shooting and then that I would recommend these to anyone. I've been, I've done like four of Jake Hicks workshops, like shameless plug for him because, oh my God, is he so good at engaging you? You do like a, a half an hour, an hour of like, he talks you through the technique. And then while you're there, he like builds the lighting set with the model standing there, shows you how he sets it all up from scratch. And then you shoot yourself with the model. So, and you're in a small group. So like everything is like very, good if you're not a sit and listen person because then you have to do it afterwards so you learn that way so that I find it so valuable and it's something I now invest in because it's like a path I want to go down and like Amy was saying earlier it's knowing what you want to do means it's worth the investment because I'm not just spending money on a course and then going oh I never want to do that (laughs) yeah yeah but um so I think they are they're really valuable and I really and it like today was I had a free weekend so I did one of his today. I've just gone back from it. And it felt really relaxing because you're in a room full of people that all love photography. And actually, I found that just from shooting at con, I've got such a leg up because I'm really used to interacting with people I've never met before. And that seems to be an experience that a lot of photographers, and I think con photographers really underestimate, is a lot of photographers are terrible at talking to models, terrible at talking to new people, don't know how to direct unsure people, blah, blah, blah. Like con mm. photography has really helped that. So being in a room and just knowing you've got the confidence, just like talk to people and talk technique and not care is very valuable. Would recommend. That's kind of a thing, right? So I had this conversation last weekend. I was at a convention. I was taking only just a few photos. And, um, and the person said to me, do you know what's really nice, Amy? And I was like, what? The fact that you will direct me? Because the amount of times that I've worked with some photographers and they just don't tell me what to do and I'm standing there like a little bit of a pleb, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, is this not a normal thing? I always thought it was quite normal for like photographers to be like, oh, can I get you to look over there and put your hand up? Or or like, can you hold your dress out? I want you to f- drop your dress so it's like all flowy and stuff like that. I thought that was a really common thing, but I've now it come to the realization be. it's not. It really should be because the, the most stressful thing is photographers that A, don't show you the back of the camera while you're shooting so you can adjust if you see something wrong or B just if the people that don't talk to you and just take pictures you're like am I that bad that you don't want to speak it should be standard and it's not and some people say like I'm too scared to talk to them I'm like well then you kind of shouldn't be putting them in that situation if you're too scared to talk to your model you don't fully understand that your photography is a collaboration and like while I sympathize with people that you know are you know new to it and stuff being nervous is fine just like leaving someone out on a limb because you're worried is less fine you kind of have to push in that situation you're in charge and you've got to be the confident person Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no I I always say that to people as well I always say to people god I'm a really nervous person they're like oh you're you're never a nervous person and I'm like no no it's because I have two personalities (laughs) I have the photographer person that just won't freaking shut up Welcome to the and podcast, then, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. It's Amy and Charlotte who won't shut up and anyone yeah. who's editing. We're just doing it for him, you know. And Literally, like, I've been sat here silently. No, I'm I, can, to... I can hear you. I can hear you clicking a little bit. Yeah. I'm like, happy. No, I'm trying to like 
find a way to come back into the conversation. But there's like you two are sort of like, I'm not needed here. I'm just going to carry on editing. I'm I'm like, listening. Amy has said literally everything that like I don't. Yeah. I'm actually in love with this woman because Amy said everything that like I genuinely also believe, which is like just don't be a dick. Educate yourself like in politeness yeah. and stuff, and just be like, just don't, just don't be a dick about stuff. Just why yeah but, i'm gonna make little pins and like give them out to people yeah don't be a dick <laughs> but don't be a dick <laughs> but, but charlotte I, do you want me to tell shill how much uh that you've now moved on from her to to amy um shill knows how much i love her because i tell <laughs> her every time i happen to stumble across her and i don't want a restraining order <laughs> <laughs> I, like for amy's context i don't know if you listen to the podcast but there have been i think four or five occasions where eddie's brought me on and I've suddenly realised it's someone whose work I love. And I've had to be like, before we start, I just need to tell you how much I love your work. And I've done the full, Aww. like, minute speech. And I've been like, Ooh. And if I'd <laughs> seen your work before, you would have got one too. But you got one, a mini one. And next time I see your... If I see you on Cosex, I'll probably cry at you because your work is stunning. Aww. But, like, I, ju- I just love other people who do good shit. And then Eddie introduces me and I'm like a gibbering wreck. And he's like, get yourself together. <laughs> <I'm podcasting. laughs> No, I think it's really funny, like, um, because I've not done any MCMs or anything. Well, I've done MCMs, I've done Birmingham, and I've done uh, Scotland. Um, Mm -hmm. I think, I'm, I wouldn't like to say this, but like a little bit of a hidden gem. So like, whenever I come down to like an English convention, people are like, holy shit, who are you? And I'm like, hey, I'm the Scottish one that only ventures <laughs> over every like once in a blue moon. Hi. Uh, and it's kind of nice, but at the same time, I always feel really like sad. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, my reach is just nowhere. Because <laughs> uh, it's like, well, I've known Eddie. Like, I've known of Eddie forever. <laughs> like, forever, I swear to God. Um, really? Yeah, like, I've followed you for a good six years seven years something like that like oh, a no, really no. long time when anna was around oh yeah you, yeah, yeah, you yeah, both no. ran it together right no no yeah. i i employed her she helps oh, me oh okay don't i do not want this narrative right there, okay hang on two stories okay so going back to a, a previous mi- a bit you were talking about how you seem to comic con seems to be such a um a good way to learn quickly shall we say because i think i found I totally agree. Comic Con has really, I think, accelerated how how I learned to do photography, how to talk to people, and how to like like direct people. I was at a um, I was at a Montreux Studio uh, on a private but um, uh, workshop, shall we say, shall we say, not workshop, but just like you know, we paid to be to say we had a selection of models and things like that, and. When I turned up, I saw like uh, like four four me- four other men, you know, in their mid, I would say forties, fifties, and they, you know, they seem to have all their gear ready. I'm sitting there going, "Oh my god, I've, I'm just this guy from Comic Con, right? I don't know what I'm doing." Like, "Oh god, I feel so out of death." I think I felt like the youngest thing in that in that building. And then halfway through the day, we were sitting down just waiting for the models to like, get, you know, changing out from one outfit to another. And then one of them, like, I think. I can't remember how the narrative went, but they just went, oh, yeah, I do landscape photography. The other one said, oh, yeah, so do I. And so I said, oh. And you're like, I'm the only portrait person. <laughs> I'm the only, yeah, I'm the most experienced portrait photographer here. Oh, my God, I'm going to cane it. Oh, my <laughs> God, I'm going to do it. And like, basically, I did give the advice of, actually, if you want to improve on your portrait photography, go to Comic-Con. That is, that is the fast track way to literally knowing what to say, what to do, not what, to, and then not, uh, and not what to do, not, not what to do, not to do. Yeah, yeah. do's and don'ts. Yeah, do's and don'ts of like at Comic Con. And yeah, it's, you know, it's, you know, I felt like I didn't, so you shouldn't judge a book by its cover as well, I, I should say. And uh, what was the other thing I was going to say? Um, what, what, do we, what we just talked about? Um, like being polite to your model? Polite or... to no. Posing them? Pose it. No, keep going, keep going. Being known? Amy being really, really <laughs> oh, being, good. Oh, being known. <laughs> so being known. Was it something? It was like being known. Um, hidden, Amy is a hidden gem, by the way. If you haven't seen her page, fucking hell. Yeah. Oh, I, well, <laughs> like everyone. I, I can't remember what the point. second point was. I can't remember the second points, but no, I um, 
I'm sure it'll come back to me in a minute. But well, I always advise like whenever I bump into so like obviously a lot of comic cons are in like city centres and stuff. At least hmm. for Scotland, a lot of ours are in city centres and not like in a big exhibition hall or anything like that. Yeah. And um, there'll be people that will always come up to me because they're like, "Oh, this is a photographer. This is a safe person, not someone dressed as a freaking Warcraft character, right?" Yeah. So. <laughs> So they always like to come up to me and have a conversation. And then some of them will be photographers themselves and they'll be like, oh, you know, what, what's this all about? And how did you get into this? And I always say to them, once you do cosplay photography, you'll realize how boring all other photography is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you'll never want to go back. It's like a forbidden fruit, right? <laughs> you're having this apple and you're like, mm, I'm going to try this apple. And then you, suddenly you're like, models are boring. <laughs> Why have a model when you can have someone with a sword? <laughs> you what know? Mood. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, the amount of people who come up and say, I don't know how to get into cosplay photography. And I was like, realistically i went to one comic con realized i was going to be really bored if i went to another one without something to do knew mm. i love photography saw and like you just bring a camera and you walk up to someone and you go hello this is my name i'm a photographer this is my page would you like to shoot with me and i almost everyone will say yes because they want mm. to showcase their costumes and all you have to do is for free in the uk take a picture of them that you're proud of they don't have to love it that you're proud of work on it at home send it to them, done. It is that easy. And then after like maybe two or three cons, if you'll find people that stick with you because they like your work and then you start to build up a portfolio and it you can shoot with hundreds of people in three days. I normally have about 120 people I've shot with from a con. Yeah. Because I market myself to beginners, like just to be clear, I, you know, it's unusual. This is why you have a backlog. Stop offering. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. It's very nice that you do offer yourself to other. I think it's because, like Amy said, like when I was starting, there wasn't anyone who was like, "You're a beginner. Come shoot with me." It was very much yeah. like, "You're a good cosplayer." So I love doing that. So I'll shoot with like 120 people, and then maybe 50 of them will come to me next con and say, "Can I shoot?" And yeah. I'm like, "I like that." And also, I've just got 150 different skin tones textures cosplays <laughs> lighting yeah, setups to practice my editing on so when people are like why are you like an editor and retoucher i'm like well because i've had that much practice that's in and for free that's insane do you find that people approach you for photos then i do like, because i'm very vocal online with like come and ask me for a picture and i'll say yes and we'll do like you know if it's a cosplay that i love and have ideas for we'll go do that if it's not we'll take some like really nice showcasey pictures in the trees but I deliberately do that because I want being like people that have come in like a cardboard box as their first costume who just want a nice picture of it. I want them to know they can come up to me. Yeah. Mm. So I've had, I've had two experiences and it's always ones that I always like to, to share with people because it, it amuses me, <laughs> but in like a good way, not in a <laughs> snobby, that's horrible. But <laughs> so like one thing I love about British people is that they queue, right? So, <laughs> I, I remember, and this this has happened more than once, so I'll be taking photos of someone, and then I turn around, and there's suddenly like a queue of people, and I'm like, uh, why is everyone queuing? So, and then having to like explain to them, like, oh, I'm, I'm not like, you know, those like, sta uh, what do you call them? You know, you get those like booths that you go and you can go get your photo taken. We don't really have them in the UK, but yes, I know what you mean. Uh, well, we have quite a few in Scotland that do oh, that. Okay. Um, and having to explain to people like oh no you'll you'll have to book in with me because that's the, just the system i run unless you've got a cosplay that i'm really interested in um so i just think it's really freaking cute just to have like a queue of people and then, i do, and I do like, get queues sometimes i'll turn around and like they'll generally be mostly be people i know but i'll say to someone i'll be like oh wait wait were you next and someone will go oh no she was here before me and like hmm. it's weird because i don't bring someone's cons to my admin for me i should but it's funny because people show up in groups of friends and they'll like organize themselves so they'll be within like oh. a 10 meter radius and they'll point at people and go she was ahead of me and i'm just like okay and i'll just go shoot with them and i just trust them all to know but yeah. it really is funny like i, I just think it's adorable <laughs> eddie do you get cues do you do or do you just run I, I was gonna say i'm i am still here i am still listening i want to be part of this it's like I've, i just realized that amy's asking a lot of questions and i'm going shit who's the host of this podcast <laughs> I'm sorry, I stopped there. No, 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 I'm okay. I'm actually like sitting there going, gosh, you'll be a better host for this podcast than I am. 
So we should do. I, I should get you on the podcast, but you're hosting, and I'll just fuck off elsewhere. Um, oh, okay. But- <laughs> no legit question, Eddie. No you- legit. No. Okay. I- you, book, you book, but do you also have people that come up and ask you for stuff? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, but I don't have cues. It's like I've always said, um, you know, I, if you see me at a comic con, I will do a drive by shooting. No, that's unbra. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I will yeah, shoot because I, I always said because I always have this myth um, ethos that it, to do you can do you can shoot anyone and everyone and you can just do three. I mean, I think we said this previously at a, a different uh, podcast shot between you and me, and Charlotte. That. I think photography is simple because you can take anyone and all you have to do is just take, ask them to do one pose, shoot them uh, far away for a full body, close up for a midriff, uh, and then closer up for like a headshot. That's all mm-hmm. they want. It's like yeah. a, a full picture of their cosplay, a little bit like action sheet shot midriff type of way, and then a the close up like if they've had like face makeup type of things to get the details in and things like that. Mm-hmm. They'll be really happy. And when I do, that's fine. But when... Actually, I want to make this probably the podcast extra. So if you are, if the other two are up for it, we're going to do a podcast extra about what we do to prepare for Comic Con. So keep an ear up for that part on the Patreon page, uh, and I'll explain later. Right. So, but yeah, and uh, you know, it's I I do have I think people know I think I'm now wearing like a, I wear like a yellow a red jacket. I was going to say yellow jacket, red jacket now, so that's easy to spot me. I think. Uh, especially when I'm in someone else's photos and they go, oh my God, Eddie, get out of the way. <laughs> Literally all the time. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's on brand. Yeah, it's on brand. I'm, I'm going to make brand. an album of photos that Eddie is in my pictures. It's fine. It's not a problem. I kind of like like keep you in because I'm like, oh, it's like an Easter egg. Yeah, it's nice. I lo- oh God, I love to be an Easter egg. Um, <laughs> You're my little Easter egg. <laughs> um but no, I don't have like cues of people because I think people do recognise that because I'm on a schedule, people respect that schedule. And if they can be fitted in, I'll do. But mm-hmm. if they can't, then... I mean, to be honest, like there are like hundreds of other photographers at a Comic-Con, but I just know that it's nice that people come to me knowing that they know they'll get a certain level of professionalism, set of photos and, 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 and other things, really. So, yeah. Um... um I've just noticed the time on the podcast, so I'm going to... I love to keep talking about this a little bit longer, and we will actually talk about this a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do is, so as an incentive for those who keep putting £2 in for the Patreon, I'm actually going to create um, an extra bit for the Patreon listeners. I may not do it every episode, but I'll try my best. Only so, when they're as cool as me and Amy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a and so bit what, of after hours. Exactly. So what we're going to discuss, so just a, a, again, more in, in, enticement, you're going to have to listen to a bit where me, Charlotte and Amy are going to talk about what we do to prepare for Comic-Con and, you know, see if we can discuss to find out if what we do is right, wrong, or it's like, oh my God, I'm going to steal that idea so much. So yeah, because um, yeah, me and Charlotte do, a, you know, we talk about a lot of admin work, but Amy's been very quiet about it. So um, so we'll, we'll have to see what she does. So yeah, um, on that note, uh, uh, so I'm going to end this part of the podcast. Thank you very much for being on the podcast. Uh, Amy, if anyone needs to find you on the social medias, where can they find you? Oh, I am found as Acoustica on most things. So Acoustica Photog on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, or you can come bug me on my webpage, which is acousticaphotography.com. Um, I'm that quirky Scottish person. So feel free to just throw abuse at me. I don't mind. <laughs> amazing, amazing. I'm hoping that's given Charlotte enough time to find out her Twitter account. That's so exactly what I just <laughs> Every time, every time. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's it's CX Warwick. Photo, yeah. Photo. Oh, is it? I'll go. Oops, so even I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Charlotte, where can they find you on the social medias? If you want to find me on social media, I am at Charlotte Woolrich underscore photography on um, Instagram and most other social media platforms. Woolrich is spelled W O O L R Y C H. On Twitter, you can find me at CX Woolrich Photo. <laughs> And I have a portfolio website, Um, Ta-da. 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 And <laughs> if anyone needs to find me on the social medias, you need, you can find me on foodandcosway.org slash links. That's where all my social media links are. Uh, if you go to uh, foodandcosway.org generally, you'll find cosplay photos I put up and some articles here and there. 
Uh, if you go to foodandcosplay.org slash podcast, you'll find previous recorded podcasts with Amy and Charlotte separately and with different subjects, with different guests, da 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 If you go to patreon.com, as I mentioned, there will be a podcast extra there. Um, um, what should I call it? Should I call it development time? No, should, should, no. That's a shit name. Anyway, uh, you go to patreon.com slash food and cosplay. You'll, uh, if you want to help produce these podcasts, just two pound a month would be fantastic. Anything, you know, anything and every would would be helpful. Otherwise, do not worry, do not panic. And uh, I think that is about it. Oh, oh, and and apologies to Martin Wong. Um, uh, we tried to get you on the podcast. We'll get, uh, we'll get you on a, on another week. So yeah, so just want to say thank you to my two guests. And please come to the Patreon, please, just to hear the extras. I'm sure people like to know what we do to prep for Comic Con um, and and things like that. And yeah, so uh, on that note, I'm going to say goodbye, and they're going to say bye. So, bye, guys. Bye. bye. Check out that nip slip. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I keep scrolling over to my Instagram. <laughs> I need to shut the conversation. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I was like, don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs>